Okay, so as uh, we go through chapter 9 with functions, all right, we've been talking about graphs, we've been talking about linear functions. Um, there's other ways to describe these things, and that's kind of what we're going to go into today. Um, and uh, today's called direct variations. We have a couple of different um, words here. So here we go. Our very first word is direct variation, everyone. Direct variation. So here's what your book, how they describe direct variation. They say it's a special type of linear equation that describes the rate of change. A relationship such that as x increases in value and then y increases or decreases at a constant rate. All right, and that's pretty important down there. So in your little box, here's what you could put. A direct variation, consistent unit rates. So we talked about unit rates a little yesterday. Consistent, they're consistent. Consistent unit rates. And also, if there's a direct variation in a graph, you're going to have two different conditions. One, it's going to be a straight line. And two, it's going to pass through the origin. Remember, guys, little reminder, right? Origin is where the x and the y axis meet, 0 0.00. Our next word, constant of variation, everyone. Constant of variation. So here's what your book says. This is the slope or the rate of change in the equation y equals kx represented by k. We're going to talk more about that. That's actually kind of your intro to an equation when it comes to... Uh, functions, linear functions, and where to find the slope or the rate of change. So here's what you can put in your box on the side. You'll also see it written like this. Y is equal to M times X. You could even say a synonym to this would be something like slope. All right, so we'll be talking about that in a bit. So here we go. Examples. So go ahead and grab your book. Flip over to page 408, 408. Go ahead and grab a paper. Book page 408. Grab a paper. Put lesson number on there, guys. Name. Book page with the problems. Okay, so the very first one I want to look at is uh, book page 408, 1A. Now, 
in this book, some of these problems you're going to see get a little wordy. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go through some of these with you to, to show you. Not that they're overly challenging or hard, but um, I want to just kind of just show you what the what they're expecting you and how how to answer these things. What they're expecting you to write. So on number one, it says recall the graph from lesson nine three of the circular design on an internet advertisement shown at the right. So you don't have to look back. It's right there. It says the design has two circles, one that is decreasing in size and one that is increasing in size. Then it says, and then we have A and B. So first of all, just to make sense, it's always good to make sense of the, the chart, right? So we have circle designs. You have two circles that are happening here. And they, they, what they do is they compare the radius of the circle, it's in centimeters, all right, with, of course, the number of seconds that has passed, right? So the green line is circle one, it says, and the blue line is circle two, all right? So we're going to take a look at 1A. It says determine if the relationship between the number of seconds and the radius of circle one is a direct variation, okay? <clears throat> So, here is, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do it, all right? So, first of all, I'm looking here at circle one, okay? With direct variation, if you remember, right, one of the things they said is, is that um, your points are going to have the same unit rate. So, for example, if I take the first point on circle one, because we're dealing with the green line here, and if I set it as a ratio of y over x, in this case, the y is 5, the x is 2. We can call that step 1. And then step 2 is, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it as a unit rate. So remember, a unit rate, the whole idea is over 1. So divide both top and bottom by 2. And we get 5, basically split in half, right, is 2.5. So what this is, is 2.5, the radius of the circle, the y is centimeters, right, in or per second. Okay, now, step three. We're going to do it again with another point on the graph. So in this case... Right? The y over the x. So when the y is 4, the x is 6. Well, if I divide both top and bottom by 6 to see how what we have in seconds here. Well, 4 divided by 6 is the same as 2 divided by 3, which is two-thirds or six-tenths centimeters in bar notation per second. Now, step four, of course, is just a quick, quick check. Are they the same? No. Direct variation will have the same. consistent unit rates throughout the graph. Okay? That's what a direct variation is. Now, here's the other thing. The easier way is to take a look and say, is it a straight line that passes through the origin? Well, is it a straight line? Yes. But does it pass through the origin? No. So that would be, of course, another way. So, what I could write is, is I could say there is not a direct variation since the graph does not pass through the origin, oops,
And then here's what they're going to say. They're going to say, and the ratio of, and then they want you to just use this, the ratio of the radius of the circle and the number of seconds is not constant. Now, what I gave you was one way you can answer it. Okay, that pretty much, and that is that is going to what be when we correct this. That's the verbiage from the book. All right, so I wanted to make sure I stayed consistent with it to show you guys what you're going to see when we talk about the answer key. But that's just another way of saying, of course, that the two unit rates are not the same. Okay. The last couple of words there on each line. You're welcome. All right, guys, questions? Okay. Here's what I want you guys to try out, okay? Off your homework, go ahead and try out problem number six. Problem number six. Okay, go. Okay, how many of you need more time? Okay. Okay, check it in. How many of you still need some more time? Okay, last few seconds and then I'll have you guys share. Bless you. Okay, 30 seconds, go ahead and share, go. Oh, I didn't 
didn't write it though, but if I write it, I put there's not a direct variation because graph does not pass through the origin of, and the ratio of the radius. I mean the number of getting tickets and the number of tickets sold is not. Alright, so problem number six. Uh, problem number six says uh, determine if the relationship between the two quantities is a direct variation. <coughs> so, again, right, for review's sake, let's see if I can fit this on. All right, so is there a direct vari variation? Well, first of all, you know, taking a look, backing it up with data here, you've got, if I do the ratio of y over x, right? We have 50 over 20, which of course reduces the five over two, which reduces to 2.5 over one, okay? And so it is 2.5, right, is our Y for, I'll just put TA for tickets available per ticket sold. And if I want to do it on this one here, we have 30 over, this is the Y is 30, X is 40 which reduces the three-fourths, right? Which if I divide by four, that of course is three-fourths up here, or 0.75. And obviously that doesn't match. And of course, to back it up, right? It's a straight line, doesn't pass through the origin. All right, so if I was gonna write this, I'll make sure you guys can see it up here. I mean, it's pretty much the same, the same wording. <clears throat> There is not a direct variation since the graph does not pass through the origin. Bless you. And the ratio of tickets available and tickets sold is not constant. All right, questions. Yeah, you guys don't have very many problems like that. All right, any questions on that part? Okay, now <clears throat> take a look at, let's take a look at actually problem number two. All right, so problem number two. I know it's small, but of course you have your book in front of you. Financial literacy. It says the equation y equals 750x represents the number of dollars, y, that's what the dollars are, Olivia earns in x weeks. So the x is the amount of weeks she basically works. Determine if there's a constant of variation. If so, 
explain what it represents. All right, so if we take a look, I'm gonna come over here. So we have y is equal to 750x. All right, so here's what I'm gonna actually do. Probably looks familiar. Now, considering the story, I'm not gonna use negative numbers. So what I can do is just use, I'll go ahead and graph three, zero, one, and two. So, y equals 750 times zero. So that would, of course, give us zero. y equals 750 times one. That gives us 750. And y <coughs> equals 750 times two. 1,500. All mental math. Now again, it's asking, determine the constant, if there is a constant of variation, okay? So what you're gonna do is, is this goes through zero, zero. However, you could, after you're building your table, set up your y over x repeat so your 1500 and 2 and again guys if it helps you right you can write your ordered pair you don't have to that's where I'm getting your y over x of course when we reduce right it's still 750 over 1 so if you say step four, compare, they have the same unit rate. So if we look at this, determine if there's a constant of variation, okay? And then it turns around and says, if so, explain what it represents. So you would say step five. Sorry guys, I'm a little because of everything else here. I'm a little restricted. What you guys can't see up there. So step five. There is a constant of variation. And then Remember it says, if so, and there is. So if so, explain what it represents. So <clears throat> if we take a look, when x, if you forgot, it says x is the number of weeks they work. That's how much money, not they, but Olivia earns. So if I take a look, if she works one week, she makes 700 $50. She admit works two weeks, she makes $1,500, right? So if I'm looking at this, I'm going, oh, well, that must mean then, if I, especially if I use my unit rate, Olivia earns $750 per week. All right, questions. Okay, try out problem number eight on your homework. Number eight, go.
Okay, check it in. How many of you need more time? Okay. Okay, anyone still working on that problem? Okay, a few more seconds, then I'll have you guys share. Okay, 30 seconds, go ahead and turn your neighbor and share. Go. Okay, I am running out of a little bit of room here on this paper. So, if we take a look at problem number eight, they give us the equation of 350x plus 5. So, if I go ahead and build our chart, Start plugging in numbers. It goes 0, 1, 2. Oops. So, 350x plus 5. Sorry. Plug in a 0, right? So that is 0 plus 5, which is 5. 350 times parentheses plus 5. Plug in our 1 for x. That's 350, like $3.50 plus $5. That's 850. And 350 times parentheses plus 5. That's 2. So 350 times 2 is like having $7. 7 plus 5 is 12. So if I test this out, right, basically I could take when y is 850, the x is 1. In this case, right, when y is 12, put it over x is 2, which reduces to 6 to 1. So obviously, there is no constant of variation. Okay? And you could easily say there's no constant of variation. Okay? The ratio... <clears throat> um, which problem are we doing? Number 8. The ratio of... Uh, represents the number of dollars Chris in charges for driving you so many miles in her taxi. So uh, the cost of her taxi ride does not vary directly with the number of miles she takes you. Okay, that would, that would be a good explanation. Okay, 
questions on that. Okay, let's, I'm going to go to another piece of paper. I actually have some room to write. So, all right, let's take a look at uh, number, number three. We'll take a look at both A and B. All right, so problem number three. It says the length of a spring stretches, um, the length that a spring sp stretches varies directly with the amount of weight attached to it. When you see varies directly, there's means there's, there's a direct variation. Okay, so that's what that actually means. Okay. <clears throat> And remember, if, if they're saying there's a direct variation, it means that consistent unit rates. All right, straight line passing through the origin. So it goes on, it says, uh, and then it just says, when an eight ounce weight is attached, the spring stretches two inches. Then 3A, 3A says, write an equation relating the weight, which is the X, and the amount of stretch, which is Y. All right, so here's what you do on this. Okay, we're actually for the first time gonna use um, the equation they give us for constant of variation. So if you take a look, constant of variation, y equals kx, or we can even use y equals mx, okay? So in this case, Put down your equation. Okay, now, step two, we're going to plug in numbers. You say, well, what numbers, Mr. Wilkins? Well, it says in the story, it says an 8-ounce weight stretches the spring 2 inches. So I need to plug them in, right? We have parentheses equals K times parentheses. So I'm going to plug the numbers in. Well... Let's take a look. It says that uh, an eight ounce, it says write an equation relating the weight, which is X. X is the weight of whatever they're talking about here. And in this story, remember, it's eight ounces. So we're gonna put eight in for the weight. It says, and then it says, and the amount of stretch, which is Y. Well, the Y is a stretch and it says it stretches it two inches. Now, after we plug the numbers in, we actually have, guess what, a one-step equation. So, step three is we're going to go ahead and solve our one-step equation. So, k is being multiplied with 8, so we divide this side by 8. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So, k is equal to, and what we have here is 2 divided by 8. Well, that reduces to one fourth if you would like to have a decimal form. There it is. Now, we're not done because while that was an equation, we were using the equation, we needed to find out what k was. They actually want us to do step four, and that is they want us to plug the numerical value back in for k. So, what I mean by that is, I'll write it down here, y equals kx. So y is equal to 0.25x. So we used an example of, that they gave us to find out what our k was which happens to be our slope, which we'll talk about later. And we plugged it in, back in for the K, and wrote our generic equation, okay? Now, 3B. It says predict the stretch of the spring when it has a 20 ounce weight attached. So here's what we're gonna do. We're actually going to use our equation.
And remember, what do they give us? They give us the 20 ounce weight. They give us the weight. And if I look back up here, they, we've set this up where the weight is X. So here's what we do. We plug in the weight for X. So we have Y equals 2,500 times, what did they say, 20 ounces? So the Y being the stretch is 2,500 times 20. Ladies and gentlemen, that is one fourth of 20. Can we take 20 and split it in half twice? You can use a calculator if you want. I'm just, this is an advanced class. I'm just talking in advanced way, right? That's one fourth. This is multiplication. One fourth of 20 is split in half, right? It's five. Now be careful because in this case, because it's a story, it's a word problem and they want an actual answer. Predict the stretch of a spring, the spring. Five, yeah, double check if you don't know the units, right? Look back up into the problem. We're talking in inches, right? A spring stretch is two inches up in the story, so this is five inches. And so step three is to solve. And the stretch, when it's a 20 ounce weight, is five inches long. Okay, questions about that? Okay, here's a problem I want you guys to do. In your book, check out problem number 10. Problem number 10. All right, try that out, go. Okay, how many of you need more time with number 10? Okay. Anyone still working on it? Okay, 
30 seconds. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and share. Share both, guys. Share your uh, equation and your final answer. Go. $14.70. Okay, so number 10 says the cost of cheese varies directly with the number of pounds bought. Suppose two pounds cost $8.40, $8.40. Write and solve an equation to find the cost of three and a half pounds of cheese. So the very first thing I need to do, of course, I'm going to use Y equals KX. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in numbers. Now, if I take a look here, it's not as specific as it was last time, but my pounds of meat, or I'm sorry, cheese, is going to be, my pounds of cheese is going to be my independent variable. It's going to be my input because you buy a certain amount of cheese and then of course the cost is what comes of it. So meaning that my input, remember, is X. I'm going to go ahead and start by plugging in the amount of cheese, which is two pounds. And it says if it's two pounds, the cost is $8.40. So if I go ahead and solve that, I divide each side by 2, just like we kind of did up here, right? And we end up with K is equal to, and then 840 split in half, basically, is $4.20. So that's what our K equals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to then come up with my equation. Y is equal to blank X, and in this case, my K is 4.20 or you can even just simplify it to 4.2x so there is our equation for this particular story all right that's our relationship so they then turn around and say well if that's the case then what is the cost of three and a half pounds of cheese so remember the pounds of cheese is the x so i'm going to go ahead and put y equals 4.2. The x is three and a half pounds. By the way, before I simplify this, three and a half pounds, what is 4.2 in this equation? Four dollars and twenty cents for one pound per pound. Okay, that's our unit rate per pound of cheese. So of course that's why we're multiplying the 4.2 times the 3.5. So for three and a half pounds of cheese, I had to grab my calculator at this point, 4.2 times 3.5 equals 14.7. And since Y is the amount of money, it's $14.70 for those three and a half pounds of cheese. All right, questions on that one? Uh, all right, believe it or not, we have one more type of problem to look at. This has a lot of different types. I want to make sure I go over as many as possible with you. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at uh, problem number four. Number four. All right, so on number four, says the table below shows the table below shows the changes in height for a kite surfer. Uh, assume the height varies directly with the number of seconds. Okay, there's a direct variation, meaning there's the same unit rate. The height of a second kite surfer increases three and a half feet per second. Does the height of the first or second kite surfer increase faster? Explain your reasoning. Okay, so what we have right is they give us a little chart time in seconds and height in feet so they say after four seconds 
Kite surfers eight feet high after six seconds. They are 12. After eight seconds, 16. Okay, so because it it varies directly, all right, we have the same unit rate, and if we take a look, right, what is it in feet per second? Well, you can take any of these. So this is step one, of course. Remember, this is feet, this is second. So if I find the unit rate, it would give me, of course, I divide both top and bottom by four. It gives me two feet for one second or two feet per second. That is the rate for the first kite server. They state that the second kite server goes three and a half feet per second. It says, does the height of the first or second kite surfer increase faster? I mean, obviously, right? Is this the first? This is the second. So you would just say, second kite surfer because use that word because or of course start a new sentence because it says explain your reasoning because the unit rates of the second kite surfer is three and a half feet per second while the first kite surfer while the first kite surfer's rate is only two feet per second. They kind of save the easiest for last. <laughs> okay, four different types of uh, problems you're going to see on the direct variation page. <laughs>